All right, folks. God bless you guys. Pray that this works. I just, Lord, Father, please. Guys, I've been trying so hard to get this information out, to get this testimony out to you. It's been unbelievable. Anyway, not going to go into it all. I'm just going to try again, okay? So anyway, here we go. I told you guys, I told you all in one of the last videos, and I'm going to remind you that when the Lord God told me to put a bell in front of this building and the significance of the number that was on that bell, 1776, that, that he told me, when you ring that bell, Jonathan, it's going to ring all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Okay, now, I just want to talk to everybody. If I was any anybody out there in YouTube land and I was watching this guy telling you that, I would be like, what? What does that mean, ring all the way back? I, I would question it. If I was you, I would question what I'm saying. Understandably so. Absolutely. So, if someone's going to make that claim, if I was out there as the audience watching this person delivering this, I would be like, well, how did the Lord communicate that to you? I mean, what was the mechanism? Did you just, were you sitting in your living room and all of a sudden you heard, Jonathan, the bell. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, how did it happen, Mr. Kleck or Jonathan? What was the way? How do you have this confidence in knowing that? That's a good question, isn't it? It's a legitimate question. So anyway, I'm going to show you. In this video, I'm going to show you what's happened out in this little building. The miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And I'm going to remind you of some stuff that's already happened and some things that have already been done so you will understand the mechanism, the way in which the Lord has communicated this. Because if I was you, I would want to know. I'd be like, well, okay, Johnny, just hang on a sec. How did the Lord communicate this to you? And so I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you real quickly. I'm going to pull up a video and I'm going to remind you of some things that have happened already. And then I'm going to show you what's happened recently in this little building where I've tried to do the floor two times and failed because I wasn't listening. I didn't, I didn't listen closely to the Lord and he wouldn't let me succeed until I got it right. Now I've got it. So I'm sure it'll succeed as soon as I do it. So now, let, let me take you on a quick little journey. I have an outline for this. Number one, the Lord told me to remind everybody, Isaiah 29, 15 through 16, potter's clay. Number two, Genesis 2, Adam was formed as a potter from the clay. Now, this is very important stuff. So let's do that right now. Let's go to Esword. And I want to show you right here. Genesis 1 is different from Genesis 2. In Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27, it said, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. The word for God is God's. It's Elohim. See right there? It's the plural of H433, which is Eloah. And it, but Elohim means gods, and it's the cumulative sum, like many in one. Gods of the supreme God. See, it's not the supreme God. It's of the supreme God. So gods of the supreme God, and another word I like to use is angels, because that's what they use in the altar. So angels, or gods, that are of the supreme God said, let us make, uh, create. Bring forth man. The word for man is a human being, hypocrite. The word is Adam. I, li I don't like saying Adam. I like saying Adam for Genesis 1. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Let us make man, a human being, hypocrite, in our image. Look at the word image. It means a phantom that is figuratively an illusion resemblance hence a representative figure especially an idol let me tell you something i love you in christ the lord god does not do idols he hates idols idols are against the lord god the human host body is an idol the human host body is a representative figure especially an idol it is an illusion it is a vain show 
It's every single one of those things, which is exactly what it says. So the definition is, 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 is exactly correct. Otherwise, you're arguing with the Word of God. Now watch. So it says, let us make man in our vain show, like a poser, representative figure, especially an idol. And then it says, so Elohim created man in his own vain show, representative figure, especially an idol, in the image, vain show, representative figure, especially an idol, of Elohim, God's angels and magistrates of the supreme God, created he him. This is Lucifer. Male and female created he them. Now, this is usually where I show you the altar of a big dead sheep that's a bunch of angels melting into semen. You've seen it a hundred times here. So I'm not going to go back and show it to you again. You can go look at hundreds of videos where I've already done it. But now let's go to Genesis 2. In Genesis 2, and the Lord God formed man from the dust. Look at the difference. It's right here the word formed is different than the word let us create. Let us make. See that word make? 62.13. It means to do or to make in the broadest sense and widest application to accomplish, to advance, to a point. So, Elohim said, let us make man in our image. Genesis 2 says, and the Lord God, not Elohim, the self-existing eternal Jehovah God, the Lord God, formed man. Look at the difference, formed. It says, through squeezing into shape especially as a potter. So when the Lord God formed his man, this is another formation of another man. It means human being hypocrite. When he formed him in out of the dust, look at this, dust, clay. You see the word dust? I'm going to make it the same color, clay. Now, it doesn't say he formed him in his image. It says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust out of the ground. And look right here. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now pay attention. 1 Corinthians 15, 45. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 right here and so it is written the first man Adam was made a living soul this is the first time that this is the first time you can actually understand and delineate that the first man that the Lord God put a living soul into is Adam, the one the Lord God formed. Watch. So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. See right here? A living soul. There it is. And it's the breath. The breath. That is by implication spirit. See right there? And he breathed into him the breath of life. And then it says, and the last Adam, look at the number of the word right here, 76, was made a quickening spirit. Okay, now watch this. Pay very close attention. Adam, right here. Adam, the first man, typically of Jesus. There's a huge difference here. Typically of Jesus, man as his representative. And this is the Adam that was formed in Genesis 2 because he names him, and I'll prove it. Watch this. Of Hebrew origin 121. You see that word? Let me show you where you're going to see that word. I'm going to highlight it green. Let's go back to Genesis 2. Here it is. You do not see that number yet. And the Lord God formed man. See the word right here, man? Okay, 
It says man, Hebrew word 120, 120, right there, 120. Okay, now watch. And he breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So this is Christ's representative in the system. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward of Eden. There he put the man whom he had formed. Look at this. I want you to look at the word formed again. Yatsar. Watch. Learn the word. Yatsar. Especially as a potter. See? Through the idea of squeezing into shape as a potter from the dust. And the word dust is clay. So potter's clay. Now watch. And the Lord God, and out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree of the ground. And da 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 da. And here we go. And let me get to this place right here. And the Lord God took the man, and here it is again, Hebrew word 120, see, right here. He took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, that thou shalt surely die, and then the Lord God's going to make him a helper. And here it is, watch. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam. You see right there? This is the very first time you see the word 121. You see it right there? And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him help and meet for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto, look, Adam, see, 121. Adam, the name of the first man. Okay, wait a minute. Let's go back to Hebrew word 120. Adam, a human being, hypocrite. But now his name is Adam, and he's had the breath of life breathed into him. And the Lord God takes, causes him, causes him to go into a deep sleep. Look at the word deep sleep. A trance, a deep sleep. That is to stun, to stupefy with sleep or death. to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Isn't it fascinating that in this system the Lord God says, Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead. Because the first Adam was a living soul. And I don't mean the first Adam from Genesis 1. I mean the first Adam that the Lord God formed so the Lord God forms, forms, doesn't create, doesn't make. He forms as a potter from the dust, clay, potter's clay. Very different than Genesis 1. And then the word becomes Hebrew word 121 instead of Hebrew word 120. And look, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. See? Hebrew word 121. Look what it says. Adam, the name of the first man. Okay, now watch. Now we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Okay, Jesus said, I am the first and the last. And so it is written, the first man, look at the word uh, for man. It says man face countenance, human being. Adam, the first man, Adam. We're not talking about the first man in Genesis 1 here. We're talking about the first man in Genesis 2, and I can prove it. Here's how you prove it. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. See, of Hebrew origin 120, Adam, 121, Adam, the first man, typically of Jesus, because then 
the Lord God breathed into him a living soul. So you have a, a man in Genesis 1 that's created by Lucifer and all the fallen. Many in one, let us create men in our vain show, representative figure, especially an idol, Genesis 1. And then in Genesis 2, the Lord God's going to go in there, and he's going to form man from the dust and breathe into him a living soul. And then instead of being Hebrew word 120, he's going to be Hebrew word 121. Adam, the representative of Christ in the system. And then you have life. Breeding with death from Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is death, the original, and then life comes in and breeds with it. Life and death are in the same system. Why do you think Adidas original is like, we're the original, the original is never finished? They're death. Jesus is life, life and death bred together in a host body system. I'm going to prove this all day long. And then, I'm going to show you that building outside. You're going to see so many miracles. You're going to take this finger. You're going to hold it like this. You're going to rotate it like this. And then you're going to go like this. Because <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, my God, click. You solved everything. No, I didn't solve anything. The Lord God solved it all and gave it to me. Here you go. So now, here it is. As it is written. Okay. Look at this. The first man is of the earth. Oh, you mean like Genesis 1. The second man is the Lord from heaven, like Genesis 2. And is the earthly such as they are earthly, and as is the heavenly such are heavenly. Do you understand? There's two different forms of man. When the the we're and the heavenly, the life and death bred together in the, in the same host body system. And the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ that came in through a virgin, is a quickening spirit. Because love dies on a cross to make the two one. This is perfection in data and understanding. So, now all these things are going to make sense to you. Now watch. Now, I'm going to go back to, okay, Isaiah 29, 15 and 16. Now I've already shown you Judas 2. Adam was formed as a potter, forms the clay. But now let's go to, let's go to, oops, let's go to Isaiah. Ready? So we'll go to Isaiah. 29. This is how the Lord, this is the very first scripture the Lord used to get me to understand things. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide, to hide by covering, and they're hiding themselves, to hide their counsel from the Lord. See the word Lord? Self-existent eternal Jehovah. And their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us? They say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Now pay attention. Surely your turning of things upside down. It literally means turn things upside down. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Ready? Yatzar, right there from Genesis 1, when the Lord God formed Adam. See, Yatzar, through the idea of squeezing into shape. So this is the living, this is the, the life-giving spirit, the soul. So surely you're turning the things upside down, shall be esteemed as, esteemed, and to understand, to, to be, if you're esteemed as, something you are regarded as you are identified as i am esteemed as the potter's clay i am regarded jonathan click is regarded as the potter's clay the living soul 
because I've turned things upside down, which is really turned things up in their system because the earth system is upside down and backwards compared to the spirit of the living God. Now watch. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. See? Clay right there. Okay, potter's clay, especially as a potter. Now, we're in Genesis, I mean, we're in Isaiah 29, 16. So surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a potter's clay. Let's run back right now. Ready? Genesis 2. Watch. And the Lord God formed, let's say, Yatzar. Right there. You know what? I'll do it pink. I'm sorry. I should have done it pink. There it is. See the word formed? especially as a potter. I'll do it pink. Watch, pink. Through the idea of squeezing it to shape, I'll do it yellow. Ready? Now, let's go back to Isaiah 29. You ready? Let's drill this into you so you understand it. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's. Oh, there it is. Yatsar. 3335. See? 3335. Just to make it impossible to fudge, I'll turn the five uh, yellow. The potter's clay, 2563. Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis 2. You ready? And the Lord God formed. See the word formed? Look, I'm going to click on 30, 33, Oh, it's the same word because I just turned that one. I just colored that yellow back in Isaiah 29, and it stays the same throughout the thing. So see, when you turn things upside down in their system, whose system? The original, you know, like Adidas original. Why do you think of the Adidas original commercial, they're all hanging upside down, right? Yeah, you know what? Let's take a look for it. Let's just do, let's just, let's just hang out for a sec. We're going to follow the outline, but let's do... And Adidas original commercial and see if we can just do Adidas original see if we can pull this up I've been having lots of weird equipment problems I pray to God this doesn't turn into a problem it looks like it's already trying to uh, okay you know what there we go I'll do I'll do I'll do this and then I'll just do a search it looks like everything's working, thank God. And then I'll just uh, do Adidas Original. Father, please keep this all working. This is sending me over the edge. Okay, get ready because, guys, we're going to the little church building. Y'all are not going to believe what's going on out there. Okay, so here we go. All right, folks. God bless you guys. Welcome to This Is It for the Heart. Okay, now watch this. Adidas. Okay, here we go. Adidas original is never finished, right? There we go. There you go. See, they're the original. Now watch. So this is Genesis 1. See, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at them all making the X's over their chest. And look at the guy in the middle. He's half black, half white. Okay. You are looking at Genesis 1, Adidas original. The reason they have three stripes What's the number three represent? Abaddon, the angel of the bottomless pit. That's why they got three. Their logo is three pyramids, by the way, if you look at it. If you know how to view it, it's really three pyramids in a row. Three stripes, Abaddon, the original. So the original race is upside down. The race that came into the system is right side up. In one host body, you have a good eye and a bad eye. In order to get converted in the system, your eyes have to become single. If, the, if your eyes become single, the whole body is full of light. Okay, now I've given you the little lesson in understanding the Bible that the Lord wanted me to give you because I'm getting ready to show you some of the most profound, mind-destroying, mind-boggling, supernatural, miraculous stuff you've ever believed you'll, you'd see in your life. 
Now, I did mention in other videos, I said that when the Lord told me to ring, when he tells me to ring the bell that's been installed out there, that bell will ring all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Well, you know what? That's absolutely nuts because the artwork that I did before I got saved in that room over there, and I'm going to show it to you. I did a short little video. I had the Garden of Eden. I had angels coming down from heaven, having sex with women. And then there was like a, a hole cut in the metal with light that comes from behind the wall where all these naked women are carved in metal. And there's locusts, there's xenomorphs coming out of that. Did you know I did all that before I ever got saved? I'd never even read the Bible. I don't think I'd ever picked up a Bible and read any passage in my entire life. And I'd done that artwork. I literally carved the Bible in metal using light as my medium. So I had angels coming down from heaven, having sex with human women, and locusts coming out of a pit. So in the garden... Adam, sex, and the end of the cycle, the end of the, the whole cycle, is locusts coming out of the pit. So it starts with the fall, and then the whole human race you think is like, uh, you think is a human race. It's really a grand illusion. It's just a, it's a medium for the transfer of energy. And then at the end of the cycle, locusts come out of the pit because that's the end result of the Garden of Eden. The end result of the Garden of Eden are locusts coming out of the pit. That's the end result. The door to the other side got opened through the medium that you call the earth and human race. And I can prove this all day long now. I got, there's so much data here. It's just, it's overwhelming. So here's the Adidas original, the upside down race. And then Gen this is Genesis 1. And Genesis 2 is the living soul, the right side up, but race. And that's been commingled with this, which is what happened in Genesis 3. Okay, now let me look at my outline real quick. I want to stick with my outline. Okay, so the Lord showed me, told me to show you all Isaiah 29, 15, and 16, that surely your turning of up things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So when I turn the virgin upside down, what does it become? A dead sheep. Because we're the dead sheep. Why? Because of the virgin. That's why my artwork has a bunch of naked women. That, that was the bait for the angels to breed life and death into the same host body system. <laughs> it's pretty profound, isn't it? Now watch. Just keep watching. I got lots of stuff to do here. Then the Lord told me to show you Genesis 2, that Adam was formed as a potter from the clay. One more time. Genesis 2, and the Lord God formed 335, through the idea of squeezing into shape, especially as a potter, man, human being ever get from the dust, and the word dust is clay. Okay, now look. And then after he, after the Lord God establishes man in the garden, and the Lord God establishes him, him in the garden, he tells him, hey, you better not touch the tree in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. And then his name goes from just man, which is Hebrew word 120. Now he gets a name, and his name is Adam, which is also, is also the same word for man. But it's Hebrew word 121. Now what's so important about you understanding what's about to happen tonight is that the word Adam is in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians as number 76. Watch. Pay attention. 1 Corinthians 15. And it is written, the first man, Adam. Now, see, is this, this is not Genesis 1. This is the first man, Adam. Because of Hebrew origin 121, Adam, the first man, typically of Jesus as his representative, because Jesus is the spirit of life and truth, and Satan is the spirit of death and lies. 
<laughs> yeah. So now look. So the first man, Adam, number 76. Don't forget this number, folks, because what when you see where this number is going to go tonight, you are going to freak out of your minds. The first Adam was made a living soul. Well, that's exactly what it says right here in Genesis 2, not Genesis 1. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed right there through, and the word breathe, I'm sorry, breathe to puff, to literally infiltrate, to blow hard, scatter, kindle, to blow breath, give up. So he breathed into his nostrils the breath look a puff that is when angry or vital breath divine inspiration the breath of life life alive and man adam see man hebrew word 120 man became a living soul do you understand you do not see that in Genesis 1. In Genesis 1, it said, Let us create man in our vain show. And Elohim, gods that are of the supreme God, said, Let us, which is plural, make man, a human being hypocrite, in our image. Phantom. Figuratively an illusion, hence a representative figure, especially an idol image vein show so they are the ones that made the original that's why adidas original is upside down that's why there's an upside down right side up paradigm in this world this is understanding everything okay now watch here we go now now that i've i've hit that part of the outline now the lord wanted me to remind you when i returned from grand junction the eden population Okay, so the population of Eden, Texas, when I came back from Grand Junction, there I am in front of the population. The Lord told me, you will stop in front of the city limits, Eden population, 2766. Can anyone argue with that? That's me wearing my V for Vengeance hat. And 2766 means consecrated potter's clay. So, because I did what the Lord told me to do, I've been converted. I heard from the Lord. He told me what to do. He told me to do these shipping containers. He explained what they represented, and he made them go to a location in the world at an address that he wanted them to go to at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir, which means covenant or proclamation of peace and the lord told me to look it uh, look up the address which was 154 he told me to look up 54 and i was like look it up and he said type it into bible meeting of 54 i didn't look up strong's 54 he told me to type in bible meaning 54 and it brought up isaiah 54 and i'm going to show that to you right now watch this so i'm going to go here I'm going to go to Isaiah. This is so mind-boggling, guys. I mean, just please stay with this video. Wait till you see what you're going to see. Okay. So, for thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou was refused, saith the Lord. For a small moment I have forsaken thee. But with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. Now don't forget, we're in Isaiah 54. The Lord told me to look up 54 in relation to the shipping containers because they were at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. What was that swear? It was a rainbow. That's funny. 
two shipping containers went to the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. 154 Rainbow. And the Lord God told me, Jonathan, look up the meaning of one. Well, I'll just tell it to you. One is a number that stands all by itself. It is the only unique number. It stands by itself, yet every other number is incorporated from it. Shema, O Israel, for the Lord your God is one. And then the Lord told me, now look up 54, Jonathan. And I typed in Bible meaning of 54. It said Isaiah 54. And the Lord told me to read Isaiah 54. Isn't it odd that in Isaiah 54, it literally says rainbow and Casimir? <laughs> you believe that? Yeah? Here it is. As I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. That's the rainbow. That was the covenant. So I have sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, neither rebuke thee. For the mountain shall depart, and the hill shall be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Casimir, proclamation of peace, covenant of peace. So you're telling me that two shipping containers that the Lord told Jonathan Cleck to convert, put this imagery in it, and some guy that I knew on, you know, a, a kind of a light basis over the phone for a few years offered me to that I could put him there because I was in a property dispute. And the containers that I that I converted just happened to end up at the corner of one Shema of Israel, the Lord your God is one, 54, Casimir, Rainbow, and Covenant of Peace. That's where they ended up? Huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's where they ended up. Great injunction means great coming together, and there was a really awesome coming together there of a bunch of people that knew that the Lord God had orchestrated, and there was some just amazing miracles that happened there as well, but the miracles you're going to see here tonight will leave you absolutely stupefied. I told you, if I was you, I would want to know, Jonathan Cleck, how do you know? that the Lord God is about to destroy the earth with fire. Well, the same way Noah knew that water was coming. The same way Noah knew water was coming, I know that the fire is coming to destroy everything. I guarantee it. And he's using the little church building outside to communicate to me very clearly what's about to happen. Now, I'm going to document the fact that he told me when I ring that bell, that bell rings all the way back to the Garden of Eden. So let me document it. I did that in this video. Cat, Cat, send me the video. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see. Make sure I got the right one. I have a lot of little video things to show you guys. Pause this. Okay, I'm just going to play it for a minute. Like, like oh, oh, in a bad way. Like, oh, oh no. no. There you go. Okay, so we Adam, a man, like, like sorrow. It's, it's an it says in the. Now you remember the bell that showed up. It said seventeen seventy six, and the number seventy six means Adam, the first man as a representative of Christ. So the bell that's hanging out there has seventeen on it, and seventy six. And the Lord told me to look it up that way, 17. And the word 17 is, oh, like, oh, like sorrow. And the word is called a boy. It, the, so the word 17 is a boy. And it means, oh, like sorrow. And then 76 means Adam, the representative of Christ, the first man as Christ representative. So the bell that's hanging out there, means, oh, like sorrow, Adam, Christ's representative. That's what that number and numerology on that bell stands for. The Lord told me to look it up. And I'm going to document it here. And when I installed that bell, the Lord told me, Jonathan, this bell is going to ring all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And I was like, can you imagine if you're me? You're like, what? And I mean, can you imagine going public and saying, yeah, guys, you know, the Lord told me. And when I ring the bell, it's going to ring all the way back to the Garden of Eden. That kind of transcends time a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's kind of a bold statement, don't you think? It takes a little bit of chutzpah to 
just to say it, don't you think? Or a lot of this. But I said it. And just watch. I'll prove it. Let's prove it. Penance. Independence in the shape of a U. And then, and then there's the three bolts that make like it looks like the face of the devil with the U being the horns and the two eyes and the mouth. And it says independence, 17, oh, 76, a man, no, like sorrow to become a man. Was it Jesus a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief? Boy, since I got saved, I can, I can testify to that. Okay, so I just want to make sure you understand what this is about right here. Let's keep going. So, anyway, the profundity of this valley of book is, is literally, I mean, this bell is ringing all the way back to the very beginning because it says independence, like we were given independence in the end, which is sorrow. And then now we're ringing the bell because it's time to go home. Okay, so see, there it is. I just said, and the Lord told me that when you ring this bell, you got your independence. That's what the Garden of Eden was all about, man getting his independence, angels getting their independence as a man in a husband-body system. Oh, like sorrow, man, Adam, as Christ's representative. The Bible said he was a man of sorrows. Now, when you see what's going to happen in this video, y'all are going to freak out of your minds. I guarantee it. You know how I know? Because I've been freaking out for days. <laughs> it's like, dude, what the heck? Okay, so there's one instance where I said it. Okay, so here I am putting the bell in the saddle that has 17, sorrow, 76, Adam, Christ's representative, written on this bell in numbers. But like I said, just watch. The miracles you're going to see today, you will not even believe. Watch this. Say it again. Battle. And I may have to do some slight tweaking adjustments. But there it is. I may have to put it around the other way because of the weight. You're not doing longer than 55 seconds. I already started it Okay, cool. So anyway, so there it is. It's in place, independence, 1776, which I told you means sorrow, Adam, like becoming man. And here's the bell that's going to be all the way back to the Garden of Eden. There it is. So I said it again. So there's absolute proof. I just proved to you I said it twice, that the Lord told me that bell will ring all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Are y'all ready to freak out of your minds? <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, I'm just going to drop some bombs on you now. You're not going to believe what you're going to see right now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and X that out. Um, I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to go to folder five, and I'm going to show you. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick testimony. I I had a problem. I I did the floor yellow, and it looked like honey, and you know there's angels coming down. And um, coming down on one side, Kata Dynasty, and then there's a silhouette of Christ on the other side with doves leaving, representing the Holy Spirit leaving, going up to heaven. But you know what? When I did the floor, I forgot to put the medallion in the middle of the floor. I could not believe that when I did the floor, 
part of the floor didn't harden. It was like honey. It was all sticky on the edges. I was like, I forgot to mix part B with the part A in the epoxy. So I had to scrape up the entire floor all the way back down to the cement. I heard the Lord telling me twins, the twins, Jonathan. And I was like, the twins. And then I had heard fire pits. So I thought, well, maybe I can just put the twins that I had cut out of metal on a fire pit when you walk in the door. Because that's what happens. The twin system burns up. And I was thinking, huh, am I supposed to put twins on the fire pit? No, I, I didn't do what he had originally shown me to do. Let me show you what the original plan was. Let me show you. I, I So here's here was the original plan. I did the Kata Dynasteo. I did the angel holding on to the Z and the P. And I had I had these angels that were falling and, and they were shaped like this, like like you know, sperm coming down from heaven. And the Z and the P is 2616. Z is the 26th letter of the alphabet. P is the 16th. And that's an angel. It's the Led Zeppelin angel. A Led Zeppelin can't fly, neither can a fallen angel. And the letter Z and the letter P, that's 26 for Z, P for 16, alphanumeric. 2616 is kata dynasteo in the Bible, and it means to bring down, to cast down, and to rule over and oppress, and to deny of a position one should enjoy. Angels were cast down and oppressed and denied of the positions they should have enjoyed. They were kata dynasteo. They were brought down, powerfully brought down by the dragon. That's why Led Zeppelin calls their man Led Zeppelin because a Led Zeppelin will fall out of the sky and a fallen angel fell. And they're mocking the angels that fell by holding on to a Z and a P, Z26, P16, 2616 in the Bible is Kata Dynasteo. Kata Dynasteo means powerfully bringing down and oppressing and ruling over God's angels. Led Zeppelin, they serve Satan in the system. So the first thing I did was, what the Lord told me, is I cut out the Led Zeppelin angel. There it is right there, two of them, one right side up, one upside down. You can see it right there I was working on. Then I made the angels falling out of the sky like sperm being cast down. Then I showed that the, the chest of the angel is really the face of a dragon, and the dragon is really eating an angel, and those are the legs sticking out of an angel. I mean, the legs sticking out of the mouth of the dragon. But here's the second thing the Lord told me to do was a set of twins, one with horns, one without horns. So there's one right side up, one upside down, because the system, like Adidas original, the original is the devil. The original is the devil. I'm sorry, upside down. And then Adam, the life-giving soul, is right side up. Right side up is life, upside down is death. And for you to get converted in your host body, your eyes have to become single. You have to arise, oh sleep, or wake up from the dead because the whole system is really dead, but you think you're alive. And so here it is. And so this is what the Lord wanted me to put on the floor of the building I'm doing. So this is a set of twins. And there is one angel here with his arms out. And there is an opposing angel that's identical. And then there is this angel right here. And there is this angel right here. Now look, this makes the sun. The Lord told me to make it like the sun and to make this ray and this ray like the north and the south and then the east and the west. And those rays are bigger than the other rays, but all the rays were to turn into sperm fertilizing the eggs. Now, that's what I was told to do. You're looking at it. You're looking at the evidence. I carved it right there after I did the dragons. There it is. That's my workspace. There it is. But guess what? When I poured the floor, I didn't put this down on the floor. I kind of conveniently forgot to cut out all these sperm and put them on the floor so the Lord wouldn't let the floor succeed. It's really quite interesting. So let me show you what happened. So I poured the, poured the floor yellow, and then I had to scrape it all up. Well, you know what? Let me back up for a second. So this was the second thing I produced over at my grinding station. There it is. There's proof. Set of twins. The four different angels. 
the representing Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, male and female from Genesis 1, and male and female from Genesis 2, Adam and Eve. And then the next thing he told me was to cut out a silhouette of Christ and to make his crown of thorns turning into doves flying away. So there is my artwork. There are my doves flying away. I, I, I replaced the crown of thorns with doves flying away. And I'm going to show you videos tonight of this sculpture that is so mind-boggling, so beautiful. I can't believe that the Lord God let me actually make it. It's unbelievable. So there it is. There's the production of the sculpture. You can see it. There's one phase. And there I am working on it. You know, so obviously there it is. I did it. Now here is here is what a north, south, east, east, and west looks like if you're doing a compass. Also, if you're doing a sun, the north the 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 north ray and the east and the south and the west rays are longer than the ones on the side. Well, that's what I was told to do with the angels. But when I produced, when I produced this set of twins, I prayed and I said, Lord, how big do you want this set of twins? And the Lord told me three feet in diameter. And I was like, okay. I didn't think anything of it. I was just like, okay, three feet. So I produced it. I cut it out of metal. I have a set of twins that are three feet. I grinded them up. I put them off to the side. And then after I did the Kata Dynasteo wall, then I did the Jesus wall. And then I'm like, okay, now it's time to do the floor. And guess what? I did it yellow. And I thought I was doing everything right. But guess what? I didn't mix part B with the epoxy. And guess what? It was a failure. And I was like, wow. And I kept hearing twins, twins. But I also heard the word fire pit. So I thought maybe I'm supposed to put them on a fire pit when you walk in the door. And so, you know, I kind of let myself kind of forget the original plan I just showed you. It's all laid out right there in front of you. So I scraped up the whole floor and I, I prayed, Lord, do you want me to do the, Lord, the floor yellow? And I heard red. And I was like, well, that's interesting. You went, you went from yellow to red. Well, think about it. The floor being yellow represented kind of Genesis 1 in the spirit of Elohim, God's angels, magistrates, Genesis 1, verse 2, moved over the waters. Semen, piss, urine. That's what the Bible says. Look, I'll show it to you. You don't believe me? Anyone doesn't believe me? I always come with the word of God. I always come with the word. That way no one can try and argue with me because you're arguing with the word. And the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim, there it is, gods of the supreme God, angels and magistrates, moved upon the face as the part that turns, think of a 180 degree turn, leaving heaven, moved upon the face of the waters. Look at this. Water figuratively juiced by euphemism, urine, semen, piss, wasting water. Well, you know what? That's really fascinating because the floors, when they were yellow, they were beautiful, but they were yellow and they looked like honey and they looked kind of like semen flowing. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty wild. But guess what? They turned out to be sticky. <laughs> I was like, that's really weird, man. I mean, you know, honey's sticky, semen's sticky. I mean, let's just be honest. And I was like, that's pretty weird. So I scraped all of it up and I took it back down to the concrete. Get rid of all that. That's kind of prophetic, right? And then I go to another floor that's blood red. And it looks like blood cells. And on one wall where the angels are coming down, I did I did a I did one bucket of all like uh Crimson red. And then I did another red bucket that had black mixed in with it. And then I did another bucket that had glittering white mixed in it. And on the wall where the angels were coming down, I did black like circles. And so it kind of was coming down in black cells into the red matrix. And then where the doves are leaving, I had kind of white. So it kind of graduated from black to white leaving, you know. It was amazing. I'm going to show it to you. And then I was like, I kept hearing the Lord saying twins, twins, twins. And I'm like, I think I forgot to do the twins again. I'll just put them on a fire pit. Well, I'm pretty good with my artwork. You know, I don't really make stupid mistakes too often, every now and then. 
But you know what? After doing these floors and they were beautiful, I went to do the clear coat and guess what? I thought, you know what? Don't use a roller just in case you don't want to get any roller nap. You know, you know, the nap of a roller, the little fuzz. And I was thinking, just trowel it on, you know, just go get a, you know, one eighth inch trowel and trowel it. But you know what? I just didn't even listen to my own advice and I went and rolled it on and it left little fuzzy things in, in, in the red, in the red floor. And I was like, what? I, there was a pretty big F bomb. <laughs> no, cause I want to be done. And I heard the Lord say, twins. Now watch this. I walk into the kitchen here. I'm like, okay, you got my attention, Lord. I'm listening. I mean, I, I've heard you say twins over and over. You're not letting me succeed on the floor because I didn't put the twins in the middle of the floor. Is that right? Let me show you what happened. This is so cool. I was like, is that is that true or not true? So, so here we go. So now I'm going to scoot down to that. So right here. So I said, so is that correct? You wanted me to show the twins. And so I cast a lot and look what it says. It says to display, show, exhibit, put on display, put on view, put on show, manifest, present, bring forward, reveal to the public, expose, expose to view, disclose, offer for approval, set out, set before someone's eyes, give a guided tour, bring to notice, draw attention to, feature, spotlight, illuminate, put in bold, high relief. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, okay, so you wanted me to show... So I'm, I'm sitting there like, okay, I was right. You wanted me to show the twins on the floor, like right when you walk in. So I'm sitting there and I'm looking at all these words that say show. I just showed you every word he showed me. And I was like, okay. And then I heard the Lord say, turn the page. So I grab a stack of pages and I go, boom, let me show what was on that page. <laughs> it's like, what? Okay, here we go. So I turn from this page and I turn all these pages and look what it says. Second self, alter ego, twin, double, look alike, image, reflection, shadow, couple, pair, twins, match pair. So it literally said display openly twins. And I was like, I knew, I knew it. I was supposed to put the twins on the floor. That's why I can't get the floor to go right. And the Lord told me that's correct. Now, when you do the floor, do it like I showed you. Y'all ready for the miracle to blow your mind? Take this finger right now, go like this, put it close to your lips and go like this. <laughs> because you're gonna need to watch this. Okay, now, remember my artwork that I showed you in there that in my room? Before I drop the bomb on you, let me give you a little quick reminder about, I'm gonna give you a little artwork tour Let's see, we should have just done this one. Let's see, right now, I just did this a few minutes ago. So let's do this. Let me give you a little reminder of what I've done. This is a hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti. The Lord God told me to build a whiteboard and enlarge this, enlarge this hieroglyph. And he led me to draw me all the changes of shadow, which show a hybrid race. I've been through it, it's in just a messenger series. Here is an actual piece of wood that was drawn and given to me by a guy named Marcel. It's got a dead sheep and a goat on my head and a serpent eating me. The identical agenda is not right left behind me. Here is a picture drawn of a girl by a guy named Carlos. It's the same agenda as a right left behind me. Here is a picture that is a representation of Edward von Munch, the, the, the painting called Scream. There is the, uh, the, the mouth, there is the eye and the eye and the hands on the side of the head and it's it's simply turned upside down and the girl is winking the reason i'm showing you this stuff is because everything i did before i got saved would give me the confidence to know that what i'm delivering now here at the end of the world is exactly completely correct this is all the work i did before i got saved over there is the crucifixion of christ it's actually in the form of a tree and it makes a tree going up, and I'll show it to you in the in the show notes where it's lit up. And there's about seven different positions of Christ being crucified. There's the lake of fire on the one side where everyone's coming down to be judged, right by the tree of life under one of the arms of Christ. And those are for those that didn't take the gift. Then over here 
is a group that's ex escaping the judgment. Then here's an angel coming on the clouds of heaven. It's Michael and a myriad of angels coming with them. Jesus with his sword drawn. Then on this part down here, and I'm going to go through these still images. There's women. There's images of naked women. Some of the girls that, you know, I was around at the time that were strippers and stuff. I, would, I was into carving the female form in my artwork and lighting it up with lights. There's angels coming down from heaven, heaven having sex with human women. Right here, this little vandergraph right here is fertilizing a female egg. The female egg turns, turns into, into the, the sun. sun. The sun is burning up. The, 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 this is the Garden of Eden, a male and a female having sex in the Garden of Eden. And here all these locusts are that are coming out of the pit. I just wanted to give you a brief understanding that this one giant piece of artwork you see behind me, this one massive piece of artwork behind me, this entire wall that I did before I got saved, I literally carved the end of the world, and I carved the beginning to the end of the world without even knowing it. This happened before I got saved. I just recently put this here because I had it left over from the building I'm doing out back, and I went ahead and just put some metallic epoxy on this metal just to show how obvious the dragon is from the Led Zeppelin angel that's being, you know, that's being cast down, Kata Dynasty. Anyway, I just want to give you a quick view, because this is a fact. You're looking at my artwork before I got saved. You're looking at a hard book that's 1,300 years before Christ that I decrypted, that has the mystery of human existence. You are also looking at Barack Obama in the Garden of Eden, as the serpent in the Garden of Eden, Barack Obama, with a big sperm on his forehead that becomes a fang of a serpent. You're looking at locusts coming out of a pit, out of a dimensional pit right here. And the front of this bar is a bunch of naked women. And I had no idea when I did this that the naked women were the representation of the lure that was lured for God's angels, which I have angels carved here and here coming down from heaven to have sex with human women. I had never even read the Bible. Never even read it. But yet I carved it all in metal. And I used light as my medium. So all these things in this one single room. Imagine you're me and you're standing in this one single room that has this kind of profound information that is all biblical. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm going to show you the Lord is absolutely confirmed and confirmed and reconfirmed that the end of the world is here and that I'm going to ring a bell that rings all the way back to the Garden of Eden. That sounds just wild, doesn't it? If somebody made that claim, I would want to know, how are you making this claim, whoever the person was? I'm the person making that claim. I have the Garden of Eden right there in my artwork. I have the Garden of Eden out there with Elu Thera and I in the Garden of Eden after I met Lou and we were dating. I put she and I in the Garden of Eden. The night I got saved, I walked out of an alley into Adam in the Garden of Eden and Christ ascending into heaven. After I went to Grand Junction and did what the Lord told me with two shipping containers, the Lord led me into to Eden, Texas, where he told me to get out of the car and do a video in Eden, Texas, or in the outskirts of Eden, Texas. He told me to look at the population of Eden, Texas, and to look it up in the Bible, it means consecrated potter's clay. The, the population, the number of the population of people, if you look that number up in the Bible, and I'll show it to you, it means consecrated, and it also means potter's clay. Well, the Bible says, surely you're turning the things upside down, so be esteemed as the potter's clay, which is what the Lord God formed in Genesis 2. Totally different than Genesis 1. And now I'm telling you the end of the world is here. I'm a harbinger. And everything I've done is proven out to be 100% accurate. Okay, now, pretty pretty bold talk there, Clack. Pretty bold talk there, buddy boy. I hope you can back it up, bro. I can. 
<laughs> Y'all ready to back it up? Y'all want to back this up? Let's do it. So let's see. Here's what the Lord told me to do in my outline. Isaiah 29, did that. Genesis 2, did it. Return from Grand Junction, populated, consecrated potter's clay. Let's take a look at that. Let's see. Uh, let's take a look at... Um, Okay, let me show you just a few things so you know they're facts. Okay, so here we go. I told you there's a whole lot of Garden of Eden going around Jonathan's house. This is the back of my head, and I'm looking at the uh, Lou in the Garden of Eden. This was all done with grinders, and it's me and Lou in the Garden of Eden. The serpent's wrapped around the whole thing, and the Lord had me write V for vengeance on top of it a long time ago. I didn't know why. When I got saved, I walked out of the alley the night I got saved. And here's, here is what I walked into right out of the alley the night I got saved. I walked into Adam in the Garden of Eden and Christ ascending into heaven. He's not crucified. See his feet right here and his arms out? He's ascending. So it's from the garden to ascension. That's what that stained glass window is. All the way from the garden to ascension. And by the way, there's a dove right underneath them. Okay, now let me keep going here. Okay, so let's see. Sometimes uh, it's kind of hard to get back to uh, the exact spot on these, um, on these show notes. They're a little bit sticky. So, so let me show you what happened. So... Garden of Eden right there on the wall behind me. Jonathan and Eleuthera. Eleuthera means licentious freedom. Jonathan, gift from God and licentious freedom in the Garden of Eden is, is a piece of my artwork. In there is the Garden of Eden and locusts coming out of a pit from beginning to end. This building I'm doing, there's a bell out there that has 1776 independence written on it. 17 sorrow 76 adam the first man the lord told me this bell is going to ring all the way back from the garden of eden well let me show you what happened here is the red floor that i did that was absolutely beautiful but i forgot to put down the twins thing and so i ended up with a bunch of little fuzzy roller naps in this thing and so you can tell i've been walking on it in dirty shoes and i was like you know what i have to do it the way the lord told me so here it is. I've gone and I've put the angels in the positions they're supposed to be in. Now I've cut the metal rays out. But here's the thing. I can't put north, south, east, and west. You know why? Because it's a three-foot diameter. So from the edges of the circle from here and here to the walls is only 24 inches. So... If I were to do a 24-inch flame going north, it would look really stupid. And I was like, well, Lord, what should I do? And I heard the Lord say, rotate it. So if this is north and this is south, the Lord said, rotate it. So north and south would be like this, and then east and west would be like this. And then the flames go to the corner of the building and then out to it. And you know what's so weird? The way the building's divided up, it fit perfectly. I was like, what? Watch. So watch. So when you walk in the building now, here the long flames are. Here's like this would be north or in south and like east and west instead of, you know, straight up and down and vertical, uh, horizontal and vertical. So it's it's it makes an X with a circle in the middle. And I was like, that is really bizarre. But get ready. The Lord told me, so I had to start measuring how long do I, how long do I cut these metal sperm, a.k.a. flames out? I'm like, well, you know, I've got to measure from the edge of the circle to the corner of the room, and it's about 34 inches, and to the sides, it's only 24. So I want longer flames for, you know, the poles and then shorter ones in between. And so I was like, oh, wow. So if I, yeah, if I orientate it like that, I can have long flames going this way. But it makes an X going into the building now. That's weird. That's identical to my parachute I jumped in Grand Junction. But wait, it gets better. <laughs> you all ready? Remember that bell that says 1776? 76 means Adam. The first man is 
Christ's representative in the system we call the earth, which is Genesis 2. Watch this. So I drew out basically what it's going to end up looking like because it'll make a big X like this with the twins in the middle. And y'all remember Madonna, don't you? Madam X coming up on the pit, don't you? Well, get ready. When I was measuring those floors, that's me. Those are my feet right there. See my feet right there? I'm standing on the yellow steps because I didn't I didn't change the step color. That's the that was the first pour that was yellow. And here I am measuring the width of the building. You see the width of the building? The Lord told me the width of the building is very significant. The width of the building is exactly 76 inches. I said the width of the building is 76 inches, and there's a set of twins with sperm fertilizing them, representing the Garden of Eden. I'll say it again, 76 Adam as Christ's representative. Oh, remember you told me the bell would ring all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Now, has anyone ever heard of a building that's 76 inches wide from wall to wall on the inside? I've done a lot of construction, never even heard of it. Not even a shed that I built. 76 inches from wall to wall on the inside of the building, 76. And y'all ready? What did I tell you my artwork in the other room was? Well, it has the Garden of Eden, had all these hot, naked, you know, carved women that were the bait for the angels that came down. And the end result is a bunch of locusts coming out of the pit, which is what the Bible says in Genesis, I mean, in Revelation 9. And the locusts come out of the pit. And I've shown you miles of that kind of stuff in my folders because girls have tattoos on their mandible, of mandibles on their vaginas. And the largest altar in the world is a big damn bug harvesting semen yeah <laughs> can't argue with all the stuff I've shown you can you I'm going to show it to you again the Lord told me to measure so here let me let me show you here is the basically the finished product for the floor so I cut all the rays of the sun out of metal there they are all cut out with the angels in the middle of the big rays making a big X as you walk in the door. It makes a big X with a set of twins, one with horns like a devil, one without. One is flesh, one is spiritual. One, The one right here with the horns has like the solid body, the one that's spiritual. Goes through to the metallic epoxy floor. There it is. And guess what? The Lord told me, Jonathan, measure the length of the building. I was like, and I call, I had Cat on the phone. I was like, Cat, I'm about to freak out. I just, I mean, if it's not enough that the width of the building is Adam, the first man, and I just got through installing a bell telling everybody, guys, when I ring that bell, it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You know, Adam, 76 on the bell. You heard me say it. I played the video. I committed to what the Lord told me to say. So let me show you the... Uh, let me show you the length of the building. There's the there's the exact length of the building. This is exactly 200 inches. 200. Let me let me show you what 200 is, just so there's no confusion. Locusts. Locusts. The length of the building is 200, and it's locusts. I'm ringing the bell from the beginning, Adam. To the end, locus. <laughs> Go ahead. You're going to need it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and now let's have a little fun and let's just go back and look at all the evidence. Yeah. Yeah, this is the end of the world, and I'm going to go ring a bell, and I got to redo the floors. No big deal. I just got to sand them down a little bit and re-pour, and then put the medallion down and, you know, be real meticulous about it. I'm pretty OCD about my stuff. That's why he wouldn't let me succeed on the floor, because 
I hadn't done it his way. And the whole building represents from Adam to the locust. And I'll tell you what, I in, the, in these show notes, I have a conversation between Corey and I that as it happened, it what unfolded in front of me was so surreal, I almost couldn't believe it. So let me just show you some videos now that document everything I'm talking about that's happened. So this is from tonight I just showed you. Let me see. I have two other videos. This is January 11th update. And this is January. Let's watch January 11th first. Okay, let's do this. No, yeah, January 11th. So see, this has been sitting around since the 11th. So let me just play this and you guys can, you know, just check it out. Let's go. Let's do it. So I'm starting this far back because as you walk up, you'll start, you'll start doing all kinds of optical illusions. Um, so let's start just, there's the metal on the roof on top of the bunk. There's the top light that's not really on because I'm trying to cut down a little illusion, you know, reflection stuff. And then, but then, and then, now you're already seeing the reflection of the ceiling. So you're looking down. And then because there's that trim that goes up the walls, you can see like right there, that trim that goes up the wall, now it goes down. And the whole thing's kind of boxed in. So now the whole thing looks like you you dive down in it. Like it looks like you actually walk down. It's so crazy. Yeah, so anyway, so that, I mean, that area is just like, like that's, subterranean like there it looks like you go into a room it's just so crazy like mean, it's just and then the walls reflect and crack too so it really gets kind of <laughs> balancey interesting what and so there's all that the projector is in and up there ready to, right there ready to go and there's the bunk up there but you know the whole thing is just light extravaganza so sorry trying to push the video in but it's not there we go anyway so yeah look at that you're like that looks like way subterranean like you're going down down there into there it's so weird i'm going to document something really quickly um i just went out and put the clear coat on uh the floor the floor is done, and uh, I did it as I believe the Lord told me to do it. And um, the thing was, I, I ignored something that um, he had told me to do. And I thought, you know, sometimes I'm not sure, and I always ask for a confirmation. And this time, I didn't ask for a confirmation. I just moved ahead with what I thought to do. Let me share something right here. Mine is a piece of Lexan. Right behind there is, is this big piece of metal right here. It's a set of twins, um, and I, I already cut it out of metal, and I already grinded it, and it was meant for this um, project. The thing was, and I'll show you an old picture from when I was grinding over it, you know, at night doing all these, uh, doing all this part of the sculpture. That was part of the work I was told to do, so I did it you know, a month ago, and it's been ready. But the thing was, I'm installing the floors, and I had heard quite some time ago that the Lord wanted it on the floor in the middle when you walked in. Well, here's the thing. So having, you know, having done this building and put everything where I thought it was supposed to go, well, when the time to get the, do the floors came here, it kind of slipped out of my mind about, that being on the floor. So anyway, I did the floor, and by a bizarre set of circumstances, I forgot to mix one of the buckets of metallic epoxy with part B. So that means I was not able to keep that floor, so I had to pull it up, and that was quite a job. Now, I just tonight I just got through redoing. Tonight was the night that I finished 
the floor again. And so I just redid this whole floor. And tonight I was putting on the clear coat. And I looked and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of little teeny hairs that pulled off the nap. And I'm thinking, what what the heck is going on? You know, I mean, I'm like, well, I don't make mistakes like this, guys. <laughs> These are not the kind of mistakes I make. So I was like, what's going on? So that would mean now that entire floor, I have to pour over it. I mean, it's not... It's not some horrible thing, but having done the whole floor again, it's like, wait a minute. So what's going on? And then I heard in my spirit, you forgot to put the twins on the floor. And there's there's a set of twins, the ones I just showed you, that I cut out of metal way back when I was cutting out, you know, the the uh, silhouette of Jesus and the, the kata dynasty, the dragon eating the angel. I did the set of twins all at the same time. Well, you know, I knew back then they were supposed to go on the floor, but when I started doing all this after I did the first um, install, when I did the first install, I, I just, I remembered that uh, the twins were still here, and I thought, I thought I heard in my spirit, you know, a fire pit, like, kind of like I, I saw I was going to just put, that big metal circle on top of a tabletop, but like a fire pit, which is what I thought that I, I found out tonight. No, that's why you're making mistakes. They need to be on the floor. Because when I was thinking about doing that, when I put that, that red floor and I was thinking about should I put those twins on the floor, it entered my mind. And see, I knew I should have done it, but I, did, I didn't do it. I was thinking, no. I'll put them on this fire pit thing. So it was like me trying to make the decision instead of letting the Lord make the decision. And, it, and it's almost kind of like I talked myself out of it, but what's this? This is what's crazy. So I was in here just, this is the second time I've got to fix the floor. And I'm like, I just, I just want to be over it. You know, I'm like, I want to get this done because I feel like I can't ring a bell until it's done. It's got to be done. I can't ring the bell every day. You know, I'm just saying, acting how I feel right now. So I was over here in the kitchen, and I was just like, okay, Lord, so I hear you tell me you want the twins on the floor. So you see that, this big, this big thing that's like the one in Grand Goten. I already, I already carved it out of metal. And, you know, I did it back with the, with the other, when I did the other big pieces. And so I heard in my spirit, yes, on the floor. And I said, so you want the twins on the floor? Y'all want to see a miracle? Look right here. So I'm sitting here in the kitchen. And I'm like, okay, can you just show me what's up? Ask the Lord, you know, like, just, can you just show me what's up? My gosh, like, this would be the, that means I have to do the floor again. That means i got to pour over that whole thing. And I'm, so I was like, Lord, can you just show me? So I do what I do, and I really need an answer. I pray, pray, pray and ask for an answer. Look what it says. It says display, show, exhibit. Put on display, you know, put in view. It's like make obvious, you know. I'll, I'll screenshot these. So, so I open it, it says make obvious. And I turn all these pages, look what it says. It says twins, double, look alike, image, couple, pair, twins. And I was like, see, I heard, you know, put the twins in the center of the floor. But honestly, you know, one thing that went through my head, like, you know, I started thinking with the flesh, I was like, well, you know, those, it'd probably be kind of weird to have them on the floor, right? When you walk in the door, you know, you couldn't put a chair there, blah, blah, blah. And so I started thinking, like, in the flesh, like, rationalizing, maybe that's not what you really want. And so after I poured the first floor, uh, I had to pull it out because I forgot to mix part B on one of the parts of the boxy. And so, when I did it the first time, I forgot to mix part B with part A on one of the buckets, so there were some soft spots in the floor, which made me have to pull it out. And then I'm like, okay, and I prayed, okay, I got this. And it entered my mind, put the twins on the floor, but I had already gotten it in my mind, no, the twins are like going on this 
uh, like circular tabletop that has lights coming through it, like a fire, I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to be. Like, you don't really want them on the floor, do you, Lord? <laughs> like, dude. So I just went out there and, and put the clear coat on, and the clear coat pulled some of the little fuzzies off the map. And I was thinking about that before I even did it. I thought, I should probably trowel it on. But the Lord let me make a mistake because I didn't put the twins on the floor. No. So, welcome to my world. <laughs> so, now i got to do it again. Praise God. Listen. You know, I say I always do what the Lord says. I try and always do what the Lord says. And uh, I knew to do it. I'll leave it during this video now. I'll go back and I'll show you pictures of what I did, you know, a month and a half ago when I was grinding all of those images. That's when I cut that out and I had already laid it out on a piece of wood and he had already shown me how it was supposed to go and I didn't do it because it spells out the system. It's, it's all, all, it's it's all, all uh, uh, an, an exhibition. exhibition of the system that we're in. It spells it out just exactly in images. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. So, as, And that's why I obviously will get to ring the bell. Uh, okay, so I'm doing a little documentation video again. I think it's so important that I keep doing these, these little bits. Um, so here I am, you know. I got my bell up there, it's installed. I have this building 95% completed. And let me tell you what's going on. This is fascinating. Guys, I've done the floors in here. The first time, well, I've done, it, this is, I've done them twice already on the bottom floor. And I thought, oh man, I just gotta get the bottom. I'm supposed to have. I'm just gonna kind of. I'm just gonna jump in real quick. I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through some some of this stuff because it's me just reiterating. It's like, dude, I can't believe I didn't do it. So, watch this. So here I am, like just kind of going through it. I've got to put the floor. In. I hadn't cut out the rays of the sun, but in my spirit, I heard fire pit. So there it is again. I wasn't obedient, and so the floor didn't work out. And so, okay. so please don't put me under pressure because the enemy's using you to put me under pressure. Do you understand? Listen, guys, don't put stuff in the mail that says "Hurry up and ring the bell." <laughs> I've been getting stuff in the mail where people are like saying "Ring the bell, ring the bell." I'm like, don't do that crap. Don't do it. The Lord will tell me when to ring the bell. Okay, not someone in a letter. Don't. You know, uh, don't, don't do it. When people send me stuff like that, I'm like, stop it. The Lord will show me in a way that's so profound, it won't be a letter in the mail that says ring the bell. And when somebody puts a letter in the mail that tells me to ring the bell, I really want to grab them and shake them real hard. <laughs> it's like, dude, shut up. Anyway, so here it is. So this is me again, just documenting all this stuff on the floor. On the other side, from here to here. So whatever the ray of the sun is over here, which is also a sperm, should be the same as the one over here. So proportionally speaking, this particular piece of metal is a 36 inch of diameter. Well, over here, if you look, it's only 20 inches. You only get 20 inches on the wall to the edge of the circle. So over here, you also have 20 inches from the wall to the edge of the circle. But right here, if, if you, to center this thing up, this, to, to look correct, this should be 20 inches here as well. And then this, this point on the circle should be 20 inches as well right here. So that would make it symmetrical, but what's really strange is that's kind of a really short distance for a ray. So the point I'm trying to make right here is like I'm going to have to reorientate this thing and that the Lord showed me just reorientate it. And that what that's going to do is that's going to end up making a big 
X in the middle of the floor. I mean, what are the odds? So let's let's go to album five. Now watch. Now I want to show you, I want to remind you guys of something. If you take the altar in the Vatican and you here here's the here's the sheep right here. If you turn it upside down and just lay it over, it makes an X. X marks a spot. That's 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 the center spot. X marks a spot. This is the altar in the Vatican, guys. Look at that. That's the sheep, and then you just turn it upside down, and it makes, look, it makes an X with a circle. That is no different than walking into this little building. See the circle? And the rays of the sun, a.k.a. sperm, will make an X. This is absolutely no different than this right here. So here it is where I've just, I've taken one and just laid it on top of the other. And it makes an X, like X marks a spot. Um, remember Madonna coming up from the pit with the X on her. X over one eye. So there's the X games that I was training for. That's That was my goal, was to be number one sky surfer in the world. And so I was, I was living my life to train for the X games in sky surfing. Now when you walk in to the building, you have a 76-inch wall and a 102-inch wall. One means Adam as Christ's representative, and then 102 means locus from the pit. I told you. <laughs> now, do you think anyone could build a building that actually has a 76-inch width of a wall and a 102-inch? and have it all add up to their artwork before you ever got saved? Do you think that's even remotely possible? You don't have to be a lunatic to say yes. It's not even remotely possible. It's not even thinkable. The only reason that building got built in those dimensions is because there were giant 6 by 6 posts that used to go to the top of the shipping container to hold the deck in place that was on top of the shipping containers. And I didn't want to pull them out. The Lord told me to build inside of it. I'm like, Weird, but okay. And I did as he said. That's how I know it's the end of the world. That's how I know for sure I'm a harbinger. That's how I know for sure the locusts are coming. That's how I know for sure that everything else that the Lord showed me is absolutely true. And as you should know too, that's why I started this video with, well, Click, how do you know all this stuff? Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how do you not know it is the question. <laughs> that's right. You see what I'm saying? Uh, here's an interesting thing Corey sent me. Uh, Union 76, gas station, 76. 76. Get it? Union with Adam. Adam, Union. So in this world, I can read their language. I understand their communication. I understand the way they communicate their messages. Now let me show you what this artwork has turned out to look like now you can see the installation we're gonna there's the installation of the silhouette of Christ with stars and this is the you know and the doves leaving this is this is not near um, how amazing it looks lit up but I'll show you I'll show you a few pictures and I've got a few videos I'm gonna share with you there you go there there you go that's going up the wall above the window with the doves leaving. It's just astounding. All the stars actually move. So I'm going to let you guys, uh, let me see if this uh, is going to do it. I'll tell you, well, let me see how long this is. I think I'll save you all the... I'll just probably start it somewhere around here. Uh, let's see. Let me just see. You know what? I'm going to show you the slideshow of the, of, you know, of the artwork I did beforehand. Here's an angel. It's a spirit. See that? See, here's like the head. There's the wing going out, wing going out. And here's like, this is the spirit of an angel coming down. And here's a little slideshow of the artwork I did before I got saved, which is all in my room. And it shows the system. So let's watch the slideshow.
So here's an angel, there's the head, the wings, arms, it's a spirit. And you can see it there. You can see that. And they're coming down from heaven to have sex with human women. Remember, all this was done with grinders. There's now this is the garden. This is the the act of sex. This is the top of this is the back of the head of a man, and this is his shoulder right here. This is his back. There's his buttocks, and here's a girl laying on her stomach. That's her buttocks right there in the small of her back, in her head. Now don't forget, everything was done with grinders. It's all grinders and light. Women, the bait. Now, this is phenomenal because that's the that's the corner which is a female egg being fertilized right here, and those are sperm fertilizing the female egg. But it also turns into the sun. So and again, so, you know, here are all these conceptual things, and here is the tree of life right here in the middle. You can see just lo what looks like a trunk going up. But there are seven or eight different uh, directional crucifixions in here with arms going out or from the side view or looking down, depending on where you stand and look at this thing that looks like a tree. And then under here are all these people coming down the lake the lake of fire going into this burning where it's all yellow and hot and it's death and they're all going into eternal judgment. Now, what's so fascinating is, guys, I did this all before I got saved. And here I am doing a building out back and I'm going to show you the identical properties now. And I'm just going to stop this little uh, slideshow. You can watch all this stuff. You can watch all of this. Uh, in the show notes you can watch all of this in the show notes and you can see uh you can see the production of where, all of this, where this where the sun comes to the corner of the building when you walk in and this okay and i'm going to leave the i'm going to leave these short little video clips uh these things are going to be in show note folder five and so you can watch all this stuff as i produce it if you want to watch uh ephesians 2 I won't make you watch it all during this video, but let me just show you some of the amazing stuff from here. So watch. Sorry. That's the floor of the building right now that's going to be installed.
There it is. All after going through the system, the twin system, the Spirit of God leaves and it goes up, and in the form of doves, there it is. A soul of Christ breaking off into doves that are leaving, and all returning to heaven. So there it is, and it literally is an understanding of the entire Bible and the system done by this one piece of art. It is absolutely staggering to see it. Anyway, I'm almost done with it, and I will diligently push through. I'm entering through the spiral staircase, and I'm coming up into this little shower area, and I'll let you on the light. So you can see there's a stainless shower in the corner. That was another miracle. There's a little bed area up there that will be separated by what's called wet sand from this area. So steam doesn't go up there. So then as you walk through this little entrance from the bathroom, there you go. There is your, there is the um, sculpture that I was told to you. Of Christ turning into doves, into the stars of the universe, and and all. But I'm gonna pause it. All those stars move. It's 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 mind-boggling. And as I'm doing this, I hear scripture: "Those who are wise shall shine like the stars in the firmament." And then while I'm doing the floor, I'm hearing the life is in the blood because see the life is in the blood because in Genesis two, when the Lord God breathed into Adam, his Adam, okay, Adam is his representative. That's when man became a living soul and life and death exist in the same host body and in order for you to make it out of here you have to be converted that's why you have to accept christ as the payment for the part of you that's death that's killing you do you understand now this is perfection in understanding everything in the bible this is the understanding of everything <laughs> It's so amazing. And it's perfect because it goes with the hieroglyph. It goes with everything. The pictures people have drawn of me. All the stuff that's happened to me, now it all fits like a perfect glove. It's amazing. It's it's so... There's no greater joy than knowing the truth. Jesus is the truth. <laughs> Look at that. Absolutely scary. <laughs> Look at that. And guys, I'm not saying this because I got to do it. I can't believe it's what I did today. And then the Z equals 26, P equals 16. Z is the 26th letter of the alphabet. P is 16. 2016 is Kata Dynastale. Down there on the wall right there will be the definition of Kata Dynastale. Down Dynasty. Dynasty carved in the green down. And so there are the angels that are being passed down, and that's why they look like sperm as well, and that's why they do become sperm. I want to show, I want to point something out. This is really fascinating. This is something the Lord showed me. The head of a sperm, they're identical to the vintage Christmas lights we used to put up. Look at it. Watch. Watch this. Look right here. Look right here. See right here. See right here. Those are just like the Christmas lights we used to put up in strings around our houses. It's crazy. And that is redeemed, and then the ones that are redeemed are returning back to where he used to say, which is where he was talking next. Roll up on this little bunk area. My dear, this is a fireplace. It's like, it's not really a fireplace. It just looks like a fireplace, but it's actually here. And then this is stainless up here, so the heat can be on very low and heat up this whole area with not a lot of, you know, electricity. So I'm going to put all over the edge so you can see what you can see. Come down here, and then I'm going to go ahead and take this blue light and shine it down there on the system from here. It's not. From what y'all are seeing, it looks like 
this water spout from here, there's no water spout at all. You can see even the detail of the angels that are in there, the term, and the detail here is here. To understand what he orchestrated without me even knowing it until the very end is one of the most profound biblical. I mean, it is so unbelievable what he's done here. And he did it all, but I didn't even realize it until it was finished, until he told me I want you to do this. Uh, and uh, he was going to show me the meaning behind all of this, which he has done. All glory to God. This is just absolutely phenomenal. It's, we'll be, I'll be able to put this together in a much more organized fashion. I'm just showing you all the work that's going into this. I'm in the bunk area. That's metallic epoxy walls there. But there's metallic epoxy behind me. Again, that's like the fireplace heater right there. And then there's the corner stainless bathroom, which I did not install stainless. I had white plastic, but it melted through with the, with the adhesive, so it looked like snakes under it. And my plumber buddy said, Tony, why don't you just use stainless? And I thought, no kidding, the Lord confirmed it. So the shower makes you stainless. And so the stainless shower is right here. And then the floor is, is white blood red, looks like blood cells. It's really quite phenomenal. Um, and I'm also going to re-pour this floor. I'm going to re-pour it basically the same. Um, red. So it's going to be the same as basically what you're looking at. But I'm going to touch it up and fix any little anomalies. Do the best I can. And so there it is, folks. I mean, this is just. So those who are wise shall shine like stars in the firmament. And there's just birds everywhere. There's birds up here. There's birds over there on the bird part. Some of them are hard to see because they're silhouettes. They're just outlined, but it is just, it is so beauty, it's mind-boggling. So the image of the twins, the orientation is. Okay, so let me exit this out now. One thing I very, let's see, let me check my outline. Jonathan gets saved, walks into stained glass window with the Garden of Eden. The night I got saved, I told you I walked right into a stained glass window at the end of the alley that had Adam in the garden and Christ ascending. Um, then 1 Corinthians 15, 45, the first Adam was a life-giving soul. That is not talking about Genesis 1. That's talking about Genesis 2. When the Lord God breathed into Adam the breath of life and man became a living soul. So one's life, one's death in the same system. And then let's see. And the Lord, and then again, the width of the building that I'm ringing the bell, the width is 76, which is Adam, the first man, as a representative of Christ. The literal, the actual building itself is 76 by 200 locusts. From Adam to the locust. <laughs> anyway, I have to redo the floor. I'm just going to do that probably tomorrow, sand it down. I'll do the top, top level first, and then I'll let it dry, and then I'll put the airline seats back up there. The top level will all be done. Then I'll do the bottom level and I'll set the medallion. And then I'll tell you what, the Lord God's going to have me ring a bell and I can guarantee you this. The end of the world's come. The end of the world's here. It's here. So if you haven't made your peace with God, you should make it because you're going to have to no matter what. Okay, and I, I don't like to be the bearer of heavy news, but the good news is you know, faith, the substance of things not seen. But look how much he's let you see to increase your faith so you can be at peace with everything that's coming. Do you understand? 
Yeah, so we can be at peace because we know it's all true now. The Bible is perfection. Absolute perfection. So anyway, uh, let's see. Let me see if there's anything else. Uh, this whole folder, I really want to go through it. I mean, look at look, I mean, look at what he did. Look at how he had me make this thing of Christ with all these doves that are that are leaving, and then a movie comes out called Clemency. Look at Clemency, and it's about a guy that's on death row, and it's it's the all the doves are leaving. Look what came out in Iran after Soleimani was killed. It says, we will take revenge. And look, it's a, it shows the, the, the will turning to doves. Isn't that crazy? I have a parachute that says V for vengeance. So as you look through folder five and you look through all the documentation that I put in here, it is so staggering and so mind boggling. It's just hard to wrap your brain around. Look how those heads of sperm are identical to Christmas lights that we used to put up when I was younger. I mean, they're identical. And then this here's all the artwork, you know, from the past with the locusts and the angels and the naked women. Look, look, at, look at the sun on my artwork. Look at the sun. That's an egg being fertilized by sperm, and it also makes the sun... That's in the corner. I mean, look at that. That's just, that's mind-blowing. Now, let me show you what's fascinating. So, you can look at the, you can look at the sun right here from my artwork right there. That's right here in the corner of that, the countertop. This, this sun right here is right here in the corner. But look at, look at what's in the building that I'm doing right now. Check it out. Look what's in the building I'm doing right now. There's the sun. It's all. It's no different. It's it's a circle. It's an egg for fertilized, and it's sperm. That's exactly what the sun is in my old artwork right here. Here it is with no lights on it. Here's the sun with no lights on it. Here's the sun. This is the same. This is the same corner with the lights on it. See it? So anyway, it's all perfection. There's the V for vengeance on my parachute. When you walk in the building now, even the, the, the set of twins makes a big X. No different than my parachute. And here is, a, here is a, the proof that in, when I stopped at Eden, Texas, 2766, right here is 2766 means potters. It says potter's clay. And then 2766. It also means consecrated, consecrated potter's clay. See right there? Consecrated, consecrated potter's clay. Because I did what the Lord said. I got my parachute with a big V right side up, B, V upside down. That's the system, the earth system is right side up, upside down, life and death in the same host body system. And the Lord's going to take vengeance on that system. Unless you've been converted and the two have become one because Christ made the two one in Christ. Victory. Victory. Victory through Christ. What do you guys think? And this is wild. Can you believe I couldn't get the floor right because I hadn't, I hadn't installed the, the sun, which is AKA the, the twin system. I mean, it's just, this is just mind boggling. It's just, it's just mind destroying. Yeah. I'm the end of the world guy. That's the greatest thing in the world. It's the worst thing in the world. It's a, it's not easy. And the enemy's been trying to really stop me from, from getting together with you guys. So anyway, pray that all this video comes out okay. I pray it all comes out okay. Guys, I love you in Christ. Thank you for your support. Thanks for the prayers. Thanks for helping support the ministry. Please continue until this is over because I'm under so much pressure. Um, I, you know, I, 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 there's days where I don't think I'm going to make it another day sometimes. I'm not joking. I'm not just saying that. There's days where I'm like, oh, oh. 
I, you know, I just don't know anymore. I'm just, I'm all, I'm walking on faith. So anyway, I'll give it my best. I'll do my best. I'll give it everything I got. Okay. You can count on me for that. I'm not a slacker. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. Let's pray. Okay. Y'all want to pray together? Y'all, everybody would like to stop and pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, Father, we're so grateful for for you that you would come into this system. You are Emmanuel with us as El, the Almighty God. We're so grateful that you would come and save us, that you would that you love us so much you came and saved us, and that we can put our faith and our hope and our trust all in you. And Lord, I pray that everybody's all in because if you're not all in, you're not in at all. So give everybody the faith and the confidence they know to trust you for the whole thing, not part of it, but for all of it. That it's not for what they've done or what I've done. It's for what you did on our behalf. And that's the only thing that gets us home. Amen. I love you. Victory in Christ. Amen. Awesome. Anyway, I'm sure I forgot stuff, you know, because there's so much. There's so much stuff that I've got. I, I mean, I literally have so much data. I, I, I'm like, Ugh. so what I'm going to try and do now is I'll let this video set for a couple days. And then I'm going to start going through some of the data that he's revealed, you know, like the imagery and the church stuff and, you know, all these girls with all these bug tattoos and all this stuff. It's like it's a no brainer. I mean, it's a no-brainer now that you have all the data. The knowledge has been done for you. I was used to do the knowledge. I have the gift of knowledge. Duh. <laughs> Who claims a false prophet? Uh, sorry, guys. You're wrong. I'm not a false prophet. I'm a prophet of the Most High God. <laughs> and it's proven out now, hasn't it? So you can count on new york being destroyed it's it's printed on the money you can count on the hoover dam going it's part of the prophetic utterance it's all going to happen i guarantee it because the lord god makes the words of his servants come true i don't have to worry about a thing it's all going to happen all right guys love you in christ peace and grace and remember, every little thing you get to eat every little thing you get to drink whatever just remember to thank god and tell him thank you and hang out with him, you know? Yeah, because, you know, I mean, imagine creating all of us and us not wanting to hang out with the one that created us. You know, that's kind of sad, right? And I feel really bad because, I mean, I have open access and there's a lot of times where I'm being a free, a total numbskull, just like, ooh. You know, we should we should enjoy the fact that we can drive around with the Lord God everywhere we go and talk to him everywhere we go. Every moment of every day, he's right here with us everywhere. Yeah. So access it. Amen. Peace and grace, guys. All right. Happy, happy days. You know, keep the faith, guys. Those who endure till the end will be saved. The word end means the end of your trial. It doesn't mean till oh, the fire, you know, you got to go through the great tribulation. The people that say that have no knowledge. They are fools. Anyone that says that, oh, no, you have to go into no, 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 no. They don't even know everything's right side up and upside down. Yet they claim to have knowledge. They know nothing. They lo Actually, they know less than nothing because they claim to have knowledge, but they don't know the most fundamental truth of everything. And if you don't know that, you know nothing. Just being straightforward. All right, guys. God bless you. Take care. Let's see. How is this going to work? Okay. Here we go. Bing. Uh, I have a little problem here with, I pray that the program doesn't stall on me.